Okay, so let's put six to it. Let me compare that against the monster's armor class, which is there with. Oh! Greetings, travelers, and welcome to Minus Two Proficiency. Let's go. Hello everyone, welcome to our D&D video. Um, we're going to be playing some Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition in a homebrew campaign. Um, I think it's fair to let my victims, my players, players is the more correct term, introduce themselves. So we are going to start off with L. Hi. I'm Ellie, and I play Francis Washington McCarthy Parker, or Ace, as I prefer to be called. I am a greaser. I'm out and about in the world for the first time ever. Uh, I'm a mechanic who works in my uh, papa's auto shop. And little do I know that I'm a bard, and I'm a human. Okay. So, following up from Ace, we're going to go to Vicky. Hi, I'm Vicky. I play Detective Trevor Fox. He's a dirty cop that is in league with Mafia, because um, they've got the dirt on him. And, yeah, he went into policing because that's what his daddy does. And he went up quite a lot. And now that she was trying to run away, we're going to pull her back in and say we're going to be going to Nanny next. Hi, I'm Nanny. I play um, Victoria Anna Marie Bitters. I'm a hobgoblin, drag queen, who can't figure out how cords work. Uh, she has been sent off on this expedition with a uh, hair that is not her favourite. Her landlord decides she needs to come back with a husband, so... You figure the best chance of doing that would be blonde. Normally, she doesn't have this colour hair. She's about six foot six, very big, but is an absolute princess. Those are definitely words which describe all of you. Um, we are using Zoom, as you can tell, so hopefully the recordings will come out fine. Um, this is minus two proficiency. 
as you can expect, there's um, going to be a lot of good quality gameplay, good quality storytelling, and good quality after editing effects. So enjoy that. Um, to address the elephant in the room, this campaign is going to be touched on some very personal issues, some very sensitive topics. And it's not always going to be as people expect. Don't forget that everybody, although they might have the same label as you, they might not react to things the same way that you do. We do try to be respectful with that. But these characters aren't played as characters, which I can't say. They are designed to be living, breathing creatures who develop their own ideas, their own ideals. As they grow up through the worlds that they live in, they go through difficult situations and find themselves within that. So when watching this, please be kind. Um, some things may upset you, but they're not designed to. If it does, it's not intended. Um, we're always free to have discussions with people, leave comments, state how that made you feel. And we're happy to explain things as and when. I will be the DM. I have a Karen haircut at the moment, but I'm changing this wig because I hate it. It's too short. I hate it so much. Um, so, let's give you some background. This campaign isn't set in the traditional D&D settings. It's actually based in the world we exist in. It's based on the 1950s, 1960s. Um, it's also as if the Second World War hadn't actually taken place. There have been some minor scuff scuffles, but nothing to the scale that it had been. The world is in its fifth age, being the age in which they've invented steam power, but not via coal, via electric, much cleaner, much better for the environment. Um, there are things like automobiles and trains, but they're not very um, common, simply because they're expensive to run, they're very new. Um, even the cars use steam power as well, so it's still very new technology. Nanny's on it already. <laughs> Didn't take long. <laughs> um, Nanny? 8.37. Cheers! <laughs> Day drunk, get a little day drunk. Not on the alcohol, Sophia. I'm alcohol free. Mm hmm. Yes, those mine. <clears throat> Nanny. <laughs> it's leftovers from last night. I don't like to waste. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You don't have don't leftovers. Waste. You don't yeah, have leftovers. This happened. I, don't, I went to sleep early because I had to go up to do this. <laughs> so the wine was left undrunk. I have to fix this. So. Sorry, don't mind me. Carry on. We are currently in the year 142 of the Fifth Age. Um, nobody quite knows when the Fifth Age is going to end. <laughs> it tends to be a traumatic experience or a world-changing experience. So, if you're all ready, we can dive into this. Let's do it. Go. Go! <laughs> <laughs> we'll start this off inside twin colleges. It's warm, close, a little sweaty. It's turn the spring. Temperatures are starting to get a little bit uncomfortable. Changing from cold mid twenties. Back down to cold. The carriage rattles on. Starts to slow. You're almost at your destination. The destination being Westport. A place none of you have ever actually been before. It's one of those quiet places, merchants. Sailors. Mm. Very much. You only really need to go there if you're 
looking for work in one of those two fields of expertise. It's not like Diva's Landing, which is Beatles Resort, it's not like West Angler City, which has everything a person could want, whether it's legal or illegal. It's not like Jamestown. Because to be fair, nothing wants to be like Jamestown. <laughs> somewhere, somewhere, somebody just disparaged my, my, my town, man. Come on. You said we used to that. that happens every second. I know, and it hurts my heart every time. Just trying to be the big city. Hey, we were the big city. <laughs> As a town, you've never been a city, so I iced you. Slows further, soft becomes so hot. The doors open. Standard station, very small station. Few people mulling about. Some people waiting to get on. Take the bags. Exit the train onto the wooden platform. You've all got different carriages, you've all different lengths along the station's edge. As you're walking along, a beam of light cuts through the trees, blinds you for half a second. Oh. Weren't quite expecting it. And as your eyes refocus to the change of light, you can see the path curves away to the left, back down from the forest. I don't know why I did that all the way over there because nobody could see it, but I saw it's it. Over there. <laughs> that way. That way. That way. Um, you all head down there. A little strange that not every else is following you, but hey, maybe they're here for other purposes. You know, they could be lumberjacks, they could have cottages in the woods. You know, you've heard of people having cottages in the woods. It's not yeah, weird. Yeah, it's not too unusual. So you're heading down the path. Consequence, 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 consequence. As you're walking along, critters skyland near you. I mean, <clears throat> How cute! Well, as you're getting closer and closer towards where you imagine Westport's going to be, the critters get less and less. And nature. Um, you do see a squirrel in the road. It stops, looks at you, and just watches as you all walk by. Hello! Hello, little squirrel! You're too cute! And then, off into the woods. Oh, stop hunting for nuts. I can relate. <clears throat> Don't trust anything from nature. About <clears throat> we'll call it seven to ten minutes of walking. My feet hurt. <sighs> you come across a town. It's well maintained. Everything's painted neatly. You come out to the point where the tavern is the very first thing you see. It's an older building. It's made out of wood. You can see some parts are made out of driftwood. It's thematic. It's a sailor's tavern. Sailor's tavern. A pub they serve sailors. Um, above the door, it says, what's his tavern? Oh. What? Sorry? What's his tavern? What is? What is? What is? What you drinking? W-A-T-Y-A, possibly S, tavern. What is? What is tavern? Mm-hmm. Ah. So, I mean, like, what you gonna have to drink? Um, there's no lights on. It's roughly around midday at the moment. 
Um, it's quite quickly closed. After all, Westport is a town of culture, civilization. Not like Tasmania, where the pubs are open all the time. Shit. <laughs> this upsets me. There are people, mining land, merchants, basic labourers, carrying boxes, and loading cargo. Um, there's a few sailors, not too many. It's the only type of day for sailor activity, really speaking. Uh -huh. Um, I will say this place, it's not like what any of you are used to. It has a smell to it. It's sweat. It's fish. It's abject poverty. Ew! Poverty. And it seems a little out of place. So if you look at the houses around you, they are pretty nice houses. Also, this is the rougher part of town, as it were. There's a few people hanging around outside the tavern. Looks like they're waiting. Seems like this tavern should be doing more business. Hmm. If they opened at a reasonable hour. I like need the hour. Seven thirty in the morning. Oh, Just the the day. The day's opening time. <laughs> Seven thirty for the day drinkers amongst us. <laughs> morning. <laughs> Should always be open, like McDonald's. I don't like this. I'm gonna have to get into that tavern somehow. <laughs> well. Turn over to you. Who would like to go first? I, I'm going to try to get into the tavern. I'm upset that it's shut and I think they should start doing business. I'm going to try to... Uh, what can I do? Roll, roll for investigation on the tavern? Am I investigating this or inspecting this? or? Well, how are you going about doing this? Are you just going up to, to open the door or are you looking to see if it's open or not? I'll just go and open the door. I don't think I need to do it for that, do I? Okay, let's see, walk up to the door, hand on handle. Door's quite clearly locked. Um, as you now up to the um, door itself, you can see that the windows, internal shutters have been closed. Hello? Hello? Could you please open? I'm thirsty! Hello? You get no answer from inside. Hello? As, as you scream to the tavern, the people <laughs> who are waiting on the outside stop, look at you. You can feel sick sets of eyes looking at you. A little uncomfortable. It's not no, quite it's the... Enjoyable. I wouldn't imagine it's quite the attention you want. Like, it's disapproving rather than approving. Any attention's good attention. They're still looking at me. Shh. Marky. <laughs> I just noticed that I'm squealing in the corner and it's like, stop it! Hot dog. Right. Okay, I'm going to go and uh, lean on the railing um, despondently. Attempt to light a cigarette, since I can't drink. Yep, well, I will, uh, I'll do something then. I'm, uh, you know, I, 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 I was aware that she was, you know, yelling to try and get into the tavern. But, you know, I, I'm, my mind's on something else, you know, I'm like, you know, I, I, I'm here because of a letter I got, you know, and my letter said that, you know, I'm going to be famous. And so, you know, I'm going to wander over and taking in the sights so I can see all these people and surveying my kingdom and uh, my future subjects, you know, they're all going to know my name. Hip thrusting a little bit, so that's what I do. And I'm going to try and get into the tavern. <laughs> okay. Um, you've just seen the gigantic woman try to get to the tavern and fail miserably. You've also noticed that nobody came when she was screeching and hollering at the door. So, what are you bringing this new to the table? Well, you know, the only sensible thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shout louder. 
I'm going to bang on the windows, bang on the doors. Hey, open up. I'm going to rub at them obnoxiously. I'm going to do a Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> hey, hello? Hey, damn it. Come on, open the door. And I'm going to continue in this way. <laughs> Regardless of anything else. Okay. But as you're there, banging on the doors, banging on the window, this tall, older gentleman, he's a human, comes down from the corner, puts his hand onto your shoulder. He's dressed in white robes with gold trim, big golden sun across the chest. He says, Would you keep it down, laddie? Some people have been up all night. They do the rest. They pay the bless you. And he rolls his hand. Irish problem nosebleed. Put <laughs> <laughs> yeah. his hands on the royal outfit, come on. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm. I'm he, he sounds Scottish and angry, so I'm going to wander away from him a little bit. It's not quite, a, it's not quite Irish, dear. Quite Irish. Scottish. No colour. Oh, no, definitely no colour. I'm going to call out because I'm getting really pissed off with my fucking lighter. Uh, excuse me, either of you gents have a light? Come sure, Jared. And over I go. <laughs> and what's our wonderful Trevor doing? Uh, he's in there attempting getting in the cabin. So he's uh, going to see if he can use his mouthy connections to get into the The mouthy connections. Okay. Um, I'm not quite sure how mouthy connections get you through a door. I don't know. Seems, seems pretty cool. I mean, you could have magic knocks, can't you? You could have magic knocks. Um, it could be thieves can't upon the door as well. Um, uh, like a little thing in the door, like a password, <laughs> a window, pan scan, retina. Um, I will say, do me a quick roll for insights. Speaking of mafia connections. Well. Um, add in your modifier, which is... Right. You go up to the tavern door, and something catches the corner of your eye. It suddenly makes a hair in the back of your neck stand on end. And you look around, and you can't place it. But something here makes you feel a little uncomfortable. You know somebody here. You don't remember quite who it is. You have that proper nagging feeling in the back of your mind saying, you've forgotten something. You've noticed something and you can't remember what it is. But I know you've forgotten it, but I'm not going to tell you. That really frustrating feeling. Yeah, I know that feeling. <laughs> the eyes came up to my square. <laughs> Is there anything else you guys would like to do? I'm going to wave at Trevor. Hello, policeman. <laughs> I'm going to introduce myself to the big red woman. Okay. He's so. waving at the perturbed policeman. <laughs> hey, Cherry. Fine looking uh, specimen like you doing in a place like this. Hi, Mum. Going to Amada Island. I got a letter. It's supposed to performance over there. Hey, that's cool. I'm supposed to be going there too. I got a letter as well. You gonna be famous too? 
I don't know. I think there are other things that I'm looking for rather than being famous at the moment. I'm also looking at Ace trying to figure out <laughs> how he's doing a drag performance, but anyway. <laughs> Um, my name's VB. Hmm. Uh, Victoria Bitters. What's your name? Strawberries. Your name's Strawberries? Huh? No. No, no, no. Oh, oh Strawberries. Okay. I'm Ace. <laughs> Not Strawberries, Ace. <laughs> oh, Ace, that's, that's cute. Yeah. I have a third school, please. <laughs> 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 I do like strawberries. Okay, so do I. Where do you come from? Me, I'm from Jamestown. Where are you from? Uh, Beaver's Landing. I don't think I've ever been to Jamestown. Is that that place where they make a lot of cars? Yeah, I make car parts there. I ain't been to, uh, I ain't been to Beaver's Landing, but it's the place with all the, uh, the sand and the, uh, what's it called? The beach. Beach! That's yeah. the one. Yeah. So much beach, so much sand. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. It's really sunny. Good cocktails. They get a lot of sand in your ass crack, though. I mean, uh, yeah. yeah. That's it, has been, it has been known to happen, depending on what you've been doing on the beach. Mr. Policeman! Hello! It's a clip. Hey. Yuri, what's your name? Trip. Okay. I just magically learn your name without even hearing it. <laughs> <laughs> speechless. It's written on your name tag. <laughs> Hello, I am Trevor. <laughs> Hello, I am Trip. Do not approach. <laughs> Do not feed. Do not approach. Dangerous. <laughs> My nip. <clears throat> Detective Fox. Hello, Detective Fox. My name's VB. And this is strawberries. Nice ace. Coffee. Ace strawberries. I'm ace. And uh, you're the heat, huh? I did take Hmm. Yeah. I bet you do. <laughs> I'm going to detect safe distance. Ace is going to gonna move gonna... away a little bit. <laughs> I'm going to. I'm going to stand closer. <laughs> Stare down at Trevor admiringly. <laughs> Even though he's a <laughs> copper, I'm not really good with coppers, but I like this one. He's got nice suspenders on, I'm guessing. He does. <laughs> so, what brings you here? Are you the security for the performances? No. Oh, on holiday? Uh, Are you a drag queen? <gasps> oh, well, you never know these days. <laughs> Having some time off work. Hmm. That's nice. And what do you do? I'm a detective. I detect things. Oh, that, you did mention that. <laughs> Not detecting brain at first. Okay, we need to stop BB from day drinking. <laughs> This is not me drunk, this is just VB being dumb. That's so when it's not VB day drinking, not you. Maybe <laughs> can't have a drink, VB can't get into the pub. <laughs> this didn't go far enough that he couldn't hear what they were saying, but he did sort of trail off there uh, that are you a drag queen, trying to work out why you'd ever want to drag a queen. <laughs> He's kind of got stuck on that, I can't work it out. <laughs> Isn't that like... That thing when you like kill someone who's royal. Well, it might also be someone like Betty Lou or Roxy could be a drag queen, a yeah, queen of true. the drag circuit. The drag circuit. I was thinking before that you know you you wouldn't you wouldn't if you if you like sat on a queen. Is it like a horse? Do you like kick them in the ribs and hope they go real fast? Because you're not going to beat a car with a queen. It's horrible. Poor horsey. Right, so now yeah, we've... Kind of an interesting mind, eh? Yeah, well, now we've heard Ace into a monologue, which I hope we never hear again. Thank you for that. <laughs> that was more intelligent than I expected his inner monologue to be. I was more expecting just like, Ace, famous... Intelligent! <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'll, I'll give a little details about the people who were around you. 
yeah, mm. we're going away out, Nice. Thank you. Um, so where VP went over and lent on the railings, there's a set of railings, some steps, some more railings. On the opposite railings is a tiefling woman. Um, she's leaning on top of the railings, looking down at the people working there. Um, it's more of a, I'm studying what you're doing, more than a perverted sort of interest in it. Um, what is what you're saying, nice There's a woman sat in the corner by the tavern. She's got quite a big sun hat on. Hold as low as possible. Um, you can just about make her part of her calves. So completely jet black. There are two gnomes there as well. Um, one of them is currently flicking through some pamphlets, reading through them, looking more interested in the fact that it's quite sunny, sees some joy in being outside with that. Um, the other one is pretty much on her hands and knees in some flower beds, <laughs> looking at the flowers. Can't stare too closely, Ice, that's creepy. <laughs> Um, there is also a there's also a guy stood um far away from everybody else. He's got quite a few bags with him. He looks a little bit, a little bit rugged, wearing a stupid little fucking beanie hat. I hate him <laughs> already. One, two, three, four, five. Who am I missing? <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, there was also an older gentleman. He's sat on one of the benches there, neatly sat together, um, very much like a mannequin, umbrella across his lap. Newspaper folded neatly on, on top of that, with a, uh, not like a bowler hat, but not quite like a top hat. Like if you were to combine the two, like an extended bowler. He's clearly got more money than he has since. Hmm. Like he seems like the kind of person who wouldn't tip. He's definitely so a person who wouldn't tip. Yeah, he can pull off. Mm-hmm. Smells like you could buy pretty things. <laughs> I sidle closer. Deep as a puddle. <laughs> Hello, wealthy old man with hopefully bum ticker. <laughs> are, are, you, are you actually talking <laughs> to the old man? That was her internal monologue. <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's just moving closer into range and just like, you know, emphasising her body. Well, if we're going to have internal monologue, we need to sign this internal monologue. Oh. <laughs> Hello, old man with bum ticker and hopefully impotence and more money than sense. Boy smoking him. <laughs> I'd like in a love heart. Damn it, you beat me to it. <laughs> um, Arrow through it. I'm quietly gravitating. <laughs> I feel so creepy. <laughs> you feel creepy. <laughs> towards the gnomes, because uh, standing at five foot two, Ace is a uh, is an adorable little manlet, and he's a uh, yeah, he's these are about the more, right size. Yeah, people who can, who can reach. <laughs> so he's, uh, he's gravitated towards the gnomes, and yeah, one of them can read, so that's something. <laughs> <laughs> All he knows about her, one likes flowers or, or can't stand up, and the other one's got like the ability to read. So. She's got brains! Yeah. <laughs> like flowers or can't stand up. <laughs> She's sitting down, so it's. You know, she might just want to sit down, I don't know. I don't want to, I don't want to cast, you know, assumptions, man, you know. So, you want with either likes flowers 
was disabled. I don't want to cast assumptions of either flowers or disabled. She's a flower lover or she's disabled. Either way. But I don't want to cast assumptions. Might have gone to sleep. I don't know. Sometimes my leg goes to sleep and I can't stand it. No ace, that's just your brain. It goes to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the other, the other one can read, so she might be out of my league, but you know, I, I can still try my luck. Alright, so, we got creepy and creepy, being creepy. <laughs> Is there anything you guys would actually like to do? <laughs> <laughs> can I, um, I want to investigate the woman in the hat. Doing big hat and sort of like hiding in a corner, feel like something's up there. Okay. Um, Investigation or insight? I would say it's likely to be investigation, I think, because you're not looking to read someone's, um, what's the word looking for? Mannerisms, you're looking to actually look beyond what you can see. Dope. So I'll do this other corner of my eye while I'm keeping my other eye firmly focused on old, rich and impotent. Um, yeah, adding a plus two to your roll. Okay. Uh, 11 plus two, 13. 13. Okay. That's fine. So... As you... Cast night at this woman. You. Oh, that's not a good sign. Okay. That seems okay. So you immediately see that she's Alvin. Specifically a drow. Oh. It's not initially a shock to you. I and mean, you've worked with one. You even live with one. Mm-hmm. Um. Sorry. It explains sun hat, you know, drought don't tend to like the light very much. It also explains why her skin is completely black. Um, go on, I'll be kind. I'll give you something a bit more. Um, you, you can tell from her, the shape of her, her, not her ankles, her calf, that she's well built. Mm. This is someone who's designed for long distance fitness. It's clearly the exit that could run for days. Endurance. I like that. Um, she's also got some bags with her. She seems to be traveling quite heavily. Hmm. Two bags full of stuff is quite a lot for someone. Possibly. I mean, you look behind you, there are 17 bags, but I mean, hmm. Perhaps she's here to perform, maybe she isn't. Hmm. And if she is here to perform, she's not really giving herself a lot of choice in outfits. No. But you do spot that in one of her bags, it is the outline of a musical instrument, but you can't quite make out what it is. Hmm. It could be a, a number of instruments. Oh, so she's probably a bard, and she may be playing music for the performances. That makes sense. That's why she doesn't have many costumes. I'm quite down with that uh, conclusion. Also admiring her carbs. Mm. Fit. <laughs> Such a creep. Out <laughs> everybody on the docks. I think it's about time we break up this creepiness a little bit. <laughs> if we must. Yeah, I, I think it. I think it's fair. So, coming up from the dock area of Westport, upstairs, is an old woman. She's human. She's moving very slowly because she's a lady of a certain age. Mm. Um, she's dressed in a brown shawl. She's got this like 
casual kind of like floral dress thing going on, quite clearly like old lady on holiday look. Um, she's also called walking stick because again, lady of a certain age. Um, following very close behind her is a fisherman. He's in his late thirties, I would say, possibly plus some forties. Um, he's a man who looks like he's been out at sea for most of his life. He's bald, a little bit of face hair, like it's quite clearly like a day or two's glove. And he's like right behind him, making sure he doesn't fall back down the stairs. Is he hot? Um. If you walk up next to him, you wouldn't be completely put out. You've walked up next to worse, to be fair. You've walked up next to better, you've also <laughs> walked up next to worse. Yeah, let's be fair, I don't think she has standards are very high. <laughs> Pretty much everything that moves at the moment. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, you've looked at the tieflin, the Dow, Ace, Trevor, Oh, man. Whilst Ace has been perving at the Tieflin, I don't think he even looked at the Drow, I didn't notice anything there. VB, both the gnomes. <laughs> We're bards! Have, it's our job to be busy! <laughs> I, I, I hope. I hope you survive this. I'm gonna ask now <laughs> is the old lady hot? Or was she hot? <laughs> <laughs> Whether we see was hot or not is difficult to tell. Um, Abe's was taking a toll on her body. Mm. To describe her as nothing but skin and bone would be insulting to skin and bone. Yeah, I, I like the things I spend time with to have both skin and bone. If you put your foot in her, she'd be pretty much classified as a shoe at that point. There's so much leather. <laughs> Uh, a lot of things, but not that. Wow, <laughs> there's a line. <laughs> Who knew? Um, there's a bar, but you can't trip over. <laughs> the elderly lady comes up, goes to the stairs, takes a breath or two. Oh, how how many of us are here now? We thought. Uh, um, oh. Um, yes, I think that makes uh, makes all of us. How many were we waiting for? Uh, I believe we were waiting for <laughs> eleven <laughs> people in general. Okay, well, I've got two eleven, so I uh, all of you going to Amad Island? Sure. Mm-hmm. It's just mockery on the old lady. <laughs> Do you actually want to cast versus mockery on an old lady which could kill the old lady, or do you just want to be a cow? <laughs> uh, probably just be a cow. Okay. All right. I'm fun, but anyway. Hold on, I'm not ready for this. <laughs> I've, got, I've got nothing clever to offer. At all. <laughs> yep, yeah, throw back your... Uh, I've, got, I've got nothing clever. Yeah, well, oh, too late. Time. Too late, you said you want to do this. Oh. Hit me. Oh, okay. Hello, old lady. Methuselah called and she wants her hymen back. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking <he's> gone. <laughs> <laughs> This was alcoholic. <laughs> also, you were old and looked funny, and you were too skinny, and your shawl was the colour of poo. There we go. Next time on uh, Minus Two Proficiency. We have some boats ready to take us to our mother island. <laughs> that was a bowl. <laughs> Are, <laughs> Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? <laughs> You can see Armada Island 
quite well now. It's got a lot of marble work going on. Ah. It's, even from the outside, it looks pretty fancy. Can I make ice carry me? I got like, you know, my rucksack, two six strings, a bass, a ukulele, a piano accordion. Sounds like a new problem. <laughs> <laughs> Make me a strength throw, then ace. See you next time!